So when I'm card counting, I'm playing perfect basic strategy, keeping accurate track of the running count, converting that running count into a true count based on the number of decks remaining, and then sizing my bet proportionally based on the true count. What makes Blackjack different from all the other games is that it's based on dependent events, which means that the past actually affects the probability of what's going to happen next. Now the card counting system that I recommend is called the high-low count system. We have the high cards, 10 jack, queen, king, and ace, and these are good for the player. But they have a count value of minus one each because as high cards are depleted from the game, player advantage up goes down. The next group of cards is the low cards, two, three, four, five, and six, and these cards are good for the dealer. So naturally, these are gonna each have a count value of plus one, because as these low cards are depleted, that means there's fewer of them that can hurt you in future play. And the third and final group of cards is the neutral cards, seven, eight, and nine, and these cards don't have a count value at all because they don't favor the house or the player. If we were to look at these three cards, the count of these is minus one. because We have two high cards and one low card. For these three cards, they have a count of plus two. So we have two low cards, which each have a count value plus one, and the neutral card has no count value. Now what most people would do once they learn the high-low count values is to adjust the count one by one. So for example, they would think minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, plus one. And so the net of all that work would be minus two. So that required adjusting the count eight times. But if you use a technique called meaningful pairs, you're gonna reduce your workload and improve your speed dramatically. So looking at this first hand, we have a cancel high-low, another high-low combination, another cancel, so no work required. Here we're going to have two high cards, so we're going to go minus two, and once again another cancel. And a neutral card doesn't mean anything with regard to the count. So using the pairs, we only have to adjust the count one time. Now once the hands are actually played out and players are hitting and doubling down, we will count them one at a time. So we're at minus two, we take a hit, that brings us to minus one, another hit, minus two, minus three, back to minus two, and we end the round at minus three. So the running count is very important. There's one more step, you need to convert that running count into what we call the true count. So this right here is about one deck of cards. The true count is simply the running count divided by the number of decks remaining rounded to the nearest half deck. So for example, if you have a running count of plus nine and there's four and a half decks remaining, well nine over four and a half gives you a true count of plus two. And as true count increases, player advantage increases. So the general idea is to bet little or nothing when you don't have the advantage and then bet proportionally more as your advantage increases. So as far as how we would size our bets, we would bet true count minus one betting units. So for example, if you were had to have a betting unit of $25 and the true count is plus two, well two minus one is one, so you should bet $25. So let's say the running count is plus 20. As you can see, we have one deck that has come out, meaning that there's five decks remaining. So that gives us a true count of 20 divided by five decks remaining, true count of plus four. We're gonna subtract one to get the optimal bet of three units. And let's use a betting unit of $100. So running count of 20, so we're gonna play this out. Now we have to play basic strategy as we're keeping track of the count. Now the count has moved down a bit to plus 17. So we have a plus 17 count divided by about four and a half decks remaining. So we're still at about a true count of plus four, so we can keep the same bet. All 
running count has increased to 23. So 23 with four decks remaining, about, gives us a true count of plus six. So how much should we bet? Well, five units. So now you get a sense of everything that you have to do. You have to play perfect basic strategy, keep track of the running count, convert that into the proper true count based on the decks remaining, and then hopefully have enough uh, leeway to be able to interact with other players and pay attention to what's going on.